He also said they will not pick a candidate until after Super Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Nikki Haley said she's going to stick around through Super Tuesday. We've been asking, as recently last night, the three of us on Pete's Fox Nation special, why is Nikki Haley running for president? There is not many good answers to that question, and the answer is certainly not to become the Republican nominee for president. That's not the answer. So the answer is, I don't know if Donald Trump gets taken down by lawfare and she's trying to be an insurance policy, or if she's playing the professional donor game. Or if she's a saboteur. Or she is going to, after Super Tuesday, switch right over to no labels and make this mm -hmm. a three-person race, Shannon. You know, Brett Baer pushed her on that Friday very uh, pointedly. Is there a potential of another third party run? Are, is there at, at any point that you would switch over to another lane? She said repeatedly, no, I'm completely foreclosing that. So unless she changes her mind about that Friday, she was pretty clear on that. But, you know, there's a lot of speculation that it isn't about becoming the nominee this time. I think the insurance policy point is a good one. I think that sort of percolates within Haley world. But there's this thought that it's really more about 28, that if President Trump loses this fall, she's going to be the one to be able to stand there and say, I was screaming at you guys that I was the electable one. He wasn't electable. And she's continually pointed to not only the 2020 election, but the interim elections, the midterms that didn't go super well, some of these special elections and other things that haven't fared well. So I, I think that's thinking is among her team that she'll be able to turn back and say, if President Trump is the nominee and if he loses, um, you guys didn't listen to me, but here I am to help you pick up the pieces. What I saw today was South Carolina's frustration with our country's direction. I've seen that same frustration nationwide. I share it. I feel it to my core. I couldn't be more worried about America. It seems like our country is falling apart. But here's the thing. America will come apart if we make the wrong choices. This has never been about me or my political future. We need to beat Joe Biden in November. I don't believe Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden. Nearly every day, Trump drives people away, including with his comments just yesterday. Today in South Carolina, we're getting around 40% of the vote. That, that's, about what, that's about what we got in New Hampshire, too. I'm going to count it. I know 40% is not 50%. But I also know 40% is not some tiny group. huge numbers of voters in our Republican primaries who are saying they want an alternative. I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. I'm a woman of my word. I'm not giving up this fight when a majority of Americans disapprove of both Donald Trump and Joe Biden. <laughs> South Carolina has spoken. We're the fourth state to do so. In the next 10 days, another 21 states and territories will speak. They have the right to a real choice. Not a Soviet-style election with only one candidate. I want you to look at this, because one of the cases that she makes for why she's staying in the race is she says, well, I'm the better general election candidate. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants Donald Trump and Joe Biden. But if you put me up against Joe Biden, I have a better chance than Donald Trump. 
Um, this is Fox News voter analysis. So we analyzed, uh, we polled the people who went to the polls yesterday. They say, almost 80% of them say, Donald Trump can win the general mm -hmm. election. Only 19% say he can't. Um, what do you make of that? She's here. She's down by 30, 35 points. And everybody knows her. You're not supposed to lose your home state. Shouldn't happen anyway. And she's losing it big. big. I mean, really, uh, I said big Lee and big Lee. <laughs> she's losing it big Lee. But we're going we're gonna to really do a job. I think that, uh, as you know, when we went to Iowa, we got the biggest margin in the history of the caucus. The biggest. That's a long time. Why do you think we she's staying in the race? Um, I don't think she knows how to get out, actually. Uh, I really don't. She did terribly in New Hampshire. She got mo the only vote she but got she was from Democrats. she has a lot of Democrats. money behind her. What do they think they're Well, they're trying to hurt me because of the general election. So the Democrats are giving her money and she's playing into the game. And I think she just can't get, she just can't get herself to get out. Uh, she's doing poorly in the votes. Look, if she was doing well, I'd understand it. But she's doing very poorly. She lost uh, in record numbers in Iowa, record numbers in New Hampshire. Uh, Nevada, uh, no name beat, uh, no name, we had no name. One of these candidates, that is who technically won the Republican primary in Nevada last night with former Governor Nikki Haley coming in a distant second place despite Trump not even being on the ballot. The Republican primary situation is messy in Nevada with a party holding a caucus tomorrow night where Mr. Trump will be on the ballot. But this result was a significant rebuke of Haley's campaign, which has vowed to stay in the race through her home state of South Carolina and through Super Tuesday, despite what is an increasingly difficult, if not perhaps impossible, path.